Hello everybody, my name is Steve and here is an overview of the stats for your physiology experiment. What I have here are your results in Excel, um, lots of different numbers, so what I've done is I've stuck it all in Minitab for you. So in Minitab, all the data, as you can see, is all there. How I've compartmentalised it is I've put the participants, three tests, uh, together there and identified which one it is in this column here which is test so for example test one was the control test two was the carbohydrates and test three was the placebo so we're going to see if there's any difference in all that data but first of all of course what we always need to do is go through and make sure that the data is correct looking at it yes it is there are as you can see a few blanks but that's because they completed the test uh, before the 65 minutes which is expected so what will happen is because the blank when we do the analysis then they'll just disregard those anyway so it shouldn't make too much of a difference it does have to be considered when we do the assumptions and one of the main assumptions is is the data normal and because there may be some where all 12 participants completed it for example in, at RP 45 here all all 12 subjects had did it so that's fine but when we go to RP50 we noticed that there was one that didn't and so on so it's just a little kind of imbalance with the uh, normality but as long as we understand that then we can get on and do the rest the next step is to see if the data is normal so simple things look at the descriptives and also do a couple of tests so I've got the results all here so I'll click on this page Go to the very top. Oh, there we go. And as you can see, here's the data, all looking all nice and hunky dory. Average age of 20.17 for uh, that. Uh, average height is 174. Things you might notice uh, you've got the uh, KS test and the uh, Shapiro Wilk test. Uh, normality is kind of yeah, maybe uh, numerically it's not the best but then again if we look at the histograms and the uh, QQ plots you can start to understand a little bit more first of all with age you can see is it normal it doesn't look it but we have to consider what the population here is and I'm assuming everyone that did this are all uh, the students down at Bedford and as you can see the, the standard age is 19 so to me it doesn't look like the normal shape or for you guys that bell shape what it is is it's, it's kind of describing that this is a student population and if we kind of use that in the title for students then it should be okay um, going on to the next one which is stature um, yes to me it's starting to look a bit bell shaped normal um, what you have to remember is there's only 12 subjects so for, to have a perfect shape is not going to happen and if we look at the uh, QQ plots it's within reason for 12 people that's not bad going so to me what I would do is I would recommend that for this test you will assume that the population tested is normal as long as you use the term for students uh, you do that you should be okay so there's that bit okay next thing that we did, needed to do was to see if there's any differences now there was a lot of data one of the simplest things that uh, you can do or what you've done in the past is do a t-test so yeah you could do that but then again there's so much data if you wanted to compare each time for rpe heart rate uh, oxygen consumption and rer then it's going to take you a heck of a long time. So in the second year, what you're going to do is learn something called uh, an analysis of variance. And this analysis of variance is a quicker way of doing it. Now, it's like t-test for multiple uh, um, variables. So click on here, go to the one way. What I've done is I've set it to give you the descriptors. So first of all, what you can do is the, there's a heck of a lot of data. You can look at the means for starters and as you can see for control 61 carbohydrates 54 and placebo 61.33 so the question is is there a difference well it looks like there is uh, and if you look through it there there are some that there seems to be a little bit of difference but a lot of the data you think well it's similar 
so you're not too sure. You could argue that there is a significant difference but with the means, but it's not really telling you the whole story. So we go on after the descriptives to um, the analysis of variance, and this is a little bit like a t-test, uh, and all it's doing is asking the question, is there any difference between the three groups? It's not telling you where the difference is, it's just saying, is there one? And of course, the important number here that we need to look at is the SIG number. And for it to have a significant difference, of course, what we're looking for is anything uh, below that magical value of 0 0.05. And if you do a quick scan all the way down here, uh, you will notice that uh, the uh, times that 0 0.05 appears is hmm, zero. So from there, the simple statement is, there is no significant difference uh, between the three tests when looking at RER, O2, heart rate, and RPE. So there you go, no significant difference. Um, I'll just show you now, just to kind of get you warmed up for the second year, but if there was a significant difference, what we can do is something called a post hoc test. And the post hoc test I've uh, used here is, is Tukey, basically because it seems to be the general does everything okay you can argue which one's best for it all but Tukey is, is the standard and that's it and what we can then do is it then drills down is there a significance between carbohydrate and placebo a sig value kind of says Ooh, well 0 0.05 there so a completion time so there's a significant difference there uh, control and placebo uh, once again yes there is so is there any significant difference in completion times between all these the answer is yeah um, looking at all the others, any other SIG values beneath 0 0.05, then the answer looks very conclusively, not really. Can't see anything beneath 0 0.05, so there you go. That's kind of um, uh, helping you justify that there is no significant difference between those values. What I then did was um, I did that analysis of variance for the other areas that were, you looked at, which was work. So I did the ANOVA test again on all that, and here it all is, again, um, a lot of data because it seems to be measuring work every single minute, which I think is a bit of an overkill, but there you go. This is what uh, SPSS is, is good at. It can do lots of data very quickly. And if I go to uh, the top of here, once again, what we're looking for is a significant value beneath 0 0.05, and a quick scan basically says, uh, there is no significant difference between the work rates between the three groups. And if you look at the Tukey post hoc tests at the very end, then once again the SIG values are all pretty high, nothing below 0 0.05, so there you go. So, in conclusion, what we find here is with statistical analysis, there may be a little bit of a, a difference between the completion times, but everything else, there is no significant difference at all. So, thank you very much. Have a good day.